So problem two, the function y is x multiplied by e to the negative x, and we're gonna find all intervals of concavity. Concavity? Recall concavity. How do we get to the concavity of the graph? So we're gonna find interval of concavity. Or we find the interval, the, the, the graph concave up and concave down. How do you find the concave up concave down interval? Think about when we did the graph in the, the chapter second, four. The second derivative. Right, we're gonna find the second derivative. So I'm gonna make a list here. We're gonna need the second derivative. The POI. And then, and then we're gonna find the hypercritical. What the hypercritical? Hypercritical is Y from prime. solving y double prime equals zero or y double prime undefined. And then we're gonna refine whether the y, y double prime greater than zero or y double prime less than zero. For greater than zero, we call the icon happy face. So this, is, this one concave up and less than zero upside down, so this case concave down. That's the way to determine whether the interval concave up or concave down, right? So this kind of the plan that we're gonna do. From the problem we have, we have y as the product of x and e to the negative x. We're gonna start with finding y prime and y double prime. So how would you like to find y prime? What rule would you like to apply? The product rule. We can use the product rule. Okay, if we use the product rule, the note here, so the product rule. That means on my side notes, my f is the function x and my g is e to the negative x. So on my notes on the side here, if f is x, the g is e to the negative x. f prime, not much to do with this. f prime is one. What is g prime? This is e to the function. Oh, Gonna be e to that function and multiply by the derivative of that function. Chain rule, don't miss out the sign. Okay, this in the form of e to the function g, you find the derivative is gonna be e to the function g multiplied by the g prime. Okay, chain rule. So we're gonna get e to the negative x times negative one or negative e to the negative x as the derivative of the g. So don't miss the negative sign here. Now we're back to the problem which the use of the product rule formula f times g prime plus f prime times g. The f is x, the g prime is negative e to the negative x plus the f prime, which is one, times the g, which is e to the negative x. So I'm gonna rewrite it as negative x e to the negative x plus e to the negative x. I see the common factor e to the negative x, e to the negative x. And I'm gonna rewrite it in the nicer form as the common factor e to the negative x times the remainder term, which is negative x plus one, or e to the negative x times one minus x as y prime. Our goal is to find y double prime and check whether it's greater than or less than zero for the concave up, concave down. We are probably 25%, 30% done of the problem. First derivative done. Next, we're gonna find the second derivative. So for the second derivative, I'm gonna, let's clean up this. So this is the first one. So next five. So next, 
we're gonna find the double prime. And from the y prime is in the product form. We use the product again. This is gonna be the new set of f and g. Okay, if f is e to the negative x and the g is one minus x, my f prime, see, I'm gonna borrow what we did for g in the earlier part here. If g is negative e to the ne negative x, so the g prime is negative e to the negative x, which is the same as the f version for the second, the second round of the derivative. So the f e to the negative x, the f prime is negative e to the negative x. We just borrow what we did from the earlier part. And the g prime is negative one. Y double prime. Y double prime using the product rule f times g prime plus the f prime times g. The f is e to the negative x. The g prime is negative one. The f prime is negative e to the negative x. The g is the quantity x minus a uh, one minus x. Okay, we write it as negative e to the negative x minus e to the negative x times one minus x. And this one, I'm gonna make it as a simplified form again. I see the common factor. I rewrite it as the simplified form as I factor out negative e to the negative x. Therefore, this is, you can see this as negative e to the negative x multiplied by one. So then I'm gonna have the factor one left in the parentheses and then plus one minus x because I pull out the negative sign from both terms. Now, my f double prime, oops, sorry, my y, we use the y notation, right? So y double prime gonna be negative e to the negative x multiplied by two minus x. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, we got y double prime. We got y double prime. This step done. Halfway done. For y double prime, as negative e to the negative x times two minus x, the negative power, we use the concept of negative power as the reciprocal of the positive power of the time. We can rewrite this as negative two minus x quantity divided by e to the x, which is the same as x minus two divided by e to the x. Well, you do not have to adjust if you, you, you don't see it uh, at this step, but you know, if you do, you use appropriate algebra, everything gonna be fine. I simplify as much as we can because I try to avoid using the power negative. When I rewrite it as y double prime in the form of, x minus two divided by e to the x. So I can go with each case to find the hypercritical value, okay? For the case of y double prime equals zero, what I can do, I just take the numerator, let me x minus two equals zero. So I get x equals two as hypercritical value, okay? And then for the case, that y double prime undefined. For the undefined case, I just take the denominator to be zero. And e to the x, they, it never be zero. It never be zero. So then will be no hypercritical come out from the undefined case. This is by the property of the exponent function, exponential function. We call the exponential function is the graph either increasing without bound or decreasing, approaching to zero, but the value always positive inside or always greater than zero. Okay, or the graph always on the upper part of the xy plane. Then now we get the hypercritical number. Okay, what are our goal of this problem? Our goal is to identify the intervals of concavity. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next slide. Since the y double prime equals zero, give us 
x equals to or the hypercritical. And our function y is in a form of x times e to the negative x. The y double prime is in the form of the x minus two divided by e to the x with double check. X minus two over e to the x. So that we're gonna use the y double prime here <clears throat> to determine the sign of the second derivative. Locate the hypercritical which is x equals two. And this is the line to determine the sign of y double prime or x minus two over e to the power x. Pick the number on the right side of x equals two. For example, for x greater than two, we pick the number like x equals three, <clears throat> excuse me. Then we have y double prime equals three minus two divided by e to the third power, we just care about the plus or minus sign, positive or negative quantity, we do not have to worry about the quantity of it or the value of it. So we can see the sin x to the power, this term always positive, 3 minus 2 is positive as well, positive divided by positive. So the right hand side of x equals 2 is going to be positive sign of the y double prime. Okay. And then we're going to pick another value on the left side of the value 2. For example, x equals easy number and x equals 0. So y double prime is 0 minus 2 divided by e to the power 0. e to the power 0 is 1, which is positive value. That's always positive for the exponential value. And the top is negative. This is negative. So negative divided by positive, it returns negative sign for the double prime. Okay, now we have the sign on the left as negative, negative opens down, so this is going to be concave down. The positive sign, happy, this is going to be concave up. We just summarize it at the end. The interval, um, the function, we say the function y equals x e to the negative x concave down on the interval negative infinity positive two and concave up on the interval two to positive infinity and we are done.